<laughs> yeah, the question is done on the recorder. So hi guys, uh, once again, I'm just uh, no, good morning, good evening to all. Today we are going to talk about interaction to a path and I'm going to introduce the uh, uh, user interface, how the user interface will be looking like that, folder structure will be looking like that. I'm going to talk about this one today. So when we talk about interaction to UI path, I think we have seen this you know, in the last demo session. So what is basically UI path? So UI path is one of the automation tool where it is a complete solution for application integration, right? We want to deal with multiple applications or if you want to automate multiple applications or different types of applications like Windows application or web application or SAP or <clears throat> Citrix type of info applications. So UI path is the best solution, the best tool where we're going to automate the process. So here we want to discuss about like what is a workflow, right? We have discussed about the workflow. So workflow is a basically it's a graphical representation of user process. So what are the business process which you want to deal? So where I'm going to show like a graphical representation. Okay. So basically they any type of workflow in terms of like you're working with any real time or real time aspect, right? Everything is a rule based process, right? If you want to deal with the login page or if you want to authenticate the user, authorize whether this guy is authorized person or not. How we are going to deal with this is one type of role because we have to follow different sub guidelines saying that this guy is the proper guy or not. So everything is here rule based. We talk about real time aspect, everything is you know uh, rule based process. So <clears throat> the workflow mainly consists of three types of work. Um, a workflow is a combination of three types of information like the sequences, flowcharts, and state missions. So we'll talk about sequence. <clears throat> It's suitable to linear process. We have already discussed this one. I'm just memorizing this part. Okay. So suitable to linear process. So what is a linear process? It's a direct process. I have a direct thing. I don't want to do any condition checking or something else. I just want to go. Hello. I'm trying to... Hello? Somebody just joined, right? Okay, fine. I'm continuing. Okay, if you have any queries, free. Yeah, I'm here. Were they able to hear me? Guys, are you able to hear me apart from other? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, we can it is very much audible. Go ahead, please. Yeah, okay. Because some, I mean, this guy is the Uday is asking Mohan are there. I mean, I mean, I mean, fine. Go ahead. I'm just going. I'm just going ahead. So let's talk about sequences for a while. Okay. So sequence is nothing but which is suitable for direct process. Right. I have a direct. You no. Know, I'm just logging to this page, but I'm going to, you no. Know, just click on the. And what I'm trying to say, just click on OK. That is what I don't have any you no know, decision making here. I don't want to do any decision making. I don't want to go back to the other. I mean, I don't want to start from <clears throat> what I'm trying to say from the top to um, top to and I mean top from the top. I don't want to do this type of operation. Then we can go for the. Then we can go for. Then we can go for the. What I'm trying to say sequences. That means that just going smoothly go from one activity to another. So I'll give one demo. Okay, let's uh, I, while you're introducing about the user interface, right, I'll give one demo for secrets and flowcharts. So what is a flowchart? So flowchart is suitable for more complex business logic. Here, right, I want to validate the business logic whether whether this guy is a prop, I mean authorized user or not. I want to I want to take some decisions. So based on the decisions, I want to what I want to do. I want to integrate the. I want to based on the decisions. I want to connect different types of activities. Okay. So we will slowly see the examples about the sequences and flowcharts, so that you will be getting no better understanding about these two. 
So here, another one is the state missions, which is suitable for very large workflows. Okay, large workflows when you have, you know, so that they can use a finite number of states in the execution. So in future, so we'll see the examples of all the states in upcoming session. So let's move on to the UI path components. So these three are very, I mean, I mean, so UA path majorly consists of three types of components. So one is UA path Storio, UA path Robot, UA path Orchestrators. The three are important things which we're going to play throughout our UA, I mean, throughout our course. So UA path Studio. What is UA path Studio? UA path Studio is nothing but its IDE, Integrator Development Environment, where I'm going to automate the process. For automating your process, what is the essential things you require here? So essential things are nothing but you should know very basic type of like what is a data type. So what is the variable? So how a small you know logic thinking is enough to do this you know, to automate your process. Here everything is like a drag and drop operations. I'm going to drag and drop. I'm going to connect between the activities. That's all. The activities are nothing but what. If you want to click on this particular element on the screen, element on the screen, so click here an activity here, right? If you want to deal with you no know, Excel operations, I have a different types of activity, which is going to like read range, write range, read cell, write cell, okay, append, append Excel. So we have different types of you know, activities for that to deal with the different types of activity. I mean, to say the different types of uh, functionalities or activities in the so in the, in the in the process, right? So we have a studio, which consists of different types of activities. We are going to see about majorly use major activities because we have hundreds of activities are available. So we are going to deal with the major. You know, what are the you know, real time I mean, activities which I have used in real time so far, or most of the things we are going to discuss about that. So UA Plus Studio by using UA Plus Studio is one of the components. By using that, I'm going to write my code and debug my code, run my code. Once I have designed my workflow, finally I'm going to publish this entire code into my orchestrator. So before moving to this, before moving to orchestrator, what exactly you did? You guys are, when you enter into the RPA environment, right, make sure that be part of development part. First of all, don't move to the like, you know, like architecture level, because if you move to architecture, uh, I mean, and, uh, orchestrator level, you may have to understand what's happening in the, I mean, in the very fast studio, right? So when you kick start in it initially, so let us move on to some time, let us kick start on the development. Let's have a have hands-on experience on UA Pass Studio, then slowly we'll move on to the architecture part. Fine. So for developing, so how to interact with UA elements, how to record the sequences, how to record the UA elements, how to scrapping, how to how the data is scrapping from the UA elements, right? We have different types of activities, different sort of methods which we're going to talk which we, which we, I mean, throughout this session. Right. So that is about the UA Path Studio. By using UA Path Studio, I'm going to design my workflow. I'm going to publish my workflow. So from there, I'm going to I'm going to publish a code into the orchestrator. Now I don't want to bother about the UA Path Studio. My major role is I'm going to play in orchestrator how to interact with the robots, how the process is assigned to robots. We will discuss all those things in detail in upcoming sessions. The next one is UA Path Robot. So UA Path Robot is nothing but what? It is going to execute the process. So what are the process which we have implemented? So we're using UA Path Studio, the core which is going to assign to the robot. The robot is going to execute the process. So I hope you got it here. What is the robot? And what is the studio? Studio is nothing but what? It's going to develop an environment where I'm going to develop my process, design my process, debug my process, and I'm going to publish my process. Once I publish the code into orchestrator, so what robot? So we have in the orchestrator, I'm going to create one robot. I'm going to configure one robot. For that robot, I'm going to assign my process. Let's say example, you are doing one process called additional two numbers. In this process, I'm going to assign to my robot robot is going to perform the additional operations based on your input so it is going to process it robot can go unattended that means that what unattended is nothing but not require human authorization we have two types of bots are available here unattended and attended bot so what is the attended bot and what is unattended bot At attended bot is nothing but you know, it is going to run human intervention is required to kickstart the bot order 
So, so what is unattended here? So, I mean, I don't require human observation to kickstart the bots here. They are doing schedules. So based on the schedule, which is going to work. So we will go, we will discuss what is unattended, what is unattended in detail in the orchestrator part. And just park it as a time being. So let us discuss about the UAPOT orchestrator. So what is UAPOT orchestrator? UAPOT orchestrator is very, very important. Fine, fine. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say here, it is a back office. Already we have discussed what is the front office and what is the back office. So what is the front office here? The front office is nothing but it's a developer mission. You have a developer mission from where you are going to kickstart the box that is called front office robot. So what is a back office? So back office robot is nothing but the box which we are running from the orchestrator. Orchestrator or back office both are same. VO or orchestrator both are same. How we are going to run the bots and how we are going to configure the bots and how we are going to create the process, how we are going to create the assets, all those stuff we will discuss in detail when we talk about orchestrator parts. So basically, orchestrator is nothing but it is a web application that we are going to host it in IAS server from there. From one application URL will be there by using that URL and going to access the orchestrator. So in orchestrator, what exactly we are going to do here? We are going to create the robots. So what is a robot? The robot is nothing but I'm just going to connect with my one machine. So I'll discuss what is a robot is a one machine which is going to perform my operation. So this is one instance. I need one machine. That machine will be acting like a robot here. Okay. This um, this whatever the process I'm going to assign to that robot, that robot when I start from back, I mean back office, obviously the process is going to kick start from that. No, I mean the associate robots. Now once we create the robot, we have to create the process. So what is the process? The process is nothing but after developing our you know, workflow, this entire workflow I'm going to publish I and mean, I'm going to publish into orchestrator. This will be sitting with the orchestrator as as nugget package. This nugget package is nothing like is nothing but like you no, know, you know, like DLL files, jar files in your dot and then Java, right? With this nugget package also same. Okay. This nugget package, for this nugget package, I'm going to deploy my process. Once the publish is done, then I'm going to deploy my process, the process where I'm going to give the process name to respect to the nugget package. Once done, once done this, then finally I'm going to kick start doing the bot. For kickstarting bot, what else you require? Okay, right? so obviously we require one working with any real time environment. Obviously, we need a configuration part. So, what is the configuration part? The configuration part is nothing but what the configuration is nothing but so you are dealing with like environment variables. So, what is the environment variable here? Like we have nothing but asset. So, what is asset? I'll give an example. I have one user ID. Okay, or else I'll I'll take it, I'll go it in this way. We have database connections, right? So what is the database connection? The database connection string is used to connect with your database. Right? So what is the connection string? So connection string is used to establish the connection between front end and back end. Why do you establish this connection string? This connection string is very very to different different environments. Why? Because the connection string, where the connection, the SQL server is, is being installed in your local machine. By the time the server name of the SQL server and, and, and login ID and password is different. The same code today, tomorrow, I mean, I mean tomorrow, the same code you are going to push it into testing environment because the code I'm given for the testing. So by the time you might have published this code in different server, right? By the time the SQL server location is different. I mean, because the testing environment is different, testing server is different, right? Where such testing environment is going to use the testing, what I'm trying to say, the SQL server server name and the user ID password is different. So the same code tomorrow we're going to push it into U8 environment, user acceptance test environment, where exactly what we have to do, where the server name, user ID and password is different. The same code finally you are going to push it into pre-production or production environment, there the server is different, user ID and password is different. I hope you got it now. Here I could not hard code this consisting in my UI class studio. This one I'm going to push it into my configuration part 
this configuration I'll be configuring to the assets that is called environment variable. Now I hope you got it. So what is the what I'm trying to say assets? When the asset is done, this so now what is the queue? Queue is very very important. What is the queue here? The queue is nothing if we want to process invoicing management system. So basically what we require we need in list of invoices, right? This list of invoices I am going to push it into so very simple this list of invoices I'm going to push it into queue. Am I right? So queue is nothing but inventory to process to automate your process. We need input. Think about manually. So in DPO sector, they usually get over the mail or over the access in they'll get a list of invoices. They're getting one list invoice, they are going to push this invoice to the application, they are going to process it, and finally they are sending one report call that this invoice I have been paid. And this invoice I have been rejected. This invoice I'm given, I'm, I have been tended. So due to some reasons, due to some rule based, due to some instructions, uh, due to some so other I mean thing is so I'm um, based on the business rules I'm going to follow this. So finally I'm going to send a report to this guy. The same operation, the same operation I do from the queue. The queue is nothing but the transactions. So I'll get the first invoice that's nothing but first transaction. I'll process it. And finally, I'm going to save this transaction into my database. From there, I'm going to generate the report. And this report, I'm going to attach the mail from the, I mean, finally, I'm going to send mail to the respective operation team saying that these are the process. I mean, these are the transaction or these are the invoices. I just completed. Please take a review into that. If that is what if we could see high level in this industry, if we could see in a high level in this, that is what the process is flow from RPA team to what I'm trying to say from op operations team. I uh, pretty much clear about this. So, what is the queue? What is the process? What is the what is the what? Now schedule. The schedule is very pretty much simple, right? I'm going to schedule the job because I have done everything. My robot is ready, my process is ready, my just configured, my data input data is also ready. I just want to keep starting the job. Or there are two ways to pick start job. One is I have one run the manual job. So by using pick start job, I can run it. If you want to schedule it, I can schedule from the orchestrator. So the jobs also from the orchestrator only don't get confused here. Schedule it, I'm going to schedule the timing. So normally, right, operation stream, their system is not available by 24 by 7 because they're having maintain space. So what will happen per day? They are going to like you know, 10 to 12 hours or you know, 15 hours. The system is up. So whenever this example, the operation system is up by morning, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. By the time I want to keep start my box, obviously. So you schedule your you no know, schedule this process by 5:30. Obviously, it's going to start the process. It's going to pull the claim from somewhere. Going to push it into queue. From the queue, I'm just to kick start my bot saying that this process to invoices. So this is how, if you could see at the top level of the environment, top level of RPA, this is how that process is flow. So what is the last but not least, logs? So logs are nothing but what? So logs are nothing but, I just, by writing the code in the, in the what I'm trying to say, in Visual Studio, I mean to say that in UEFA Studio, where we used to have more number of logs. Why we need logs here? I just want to log it use nothing but one of the debugging concepts here. So if you want to debug the workflow, I have to write more numlog logs. If you write the more numlog logs, so what will happen? This log information is going to push it into orchestrator database from there, which is going to display into the logs screen. Where I can see, where I can filter it, like what is Robo1 is doing, what is Robo2 is doing. I can easily filter by Robo name and I can see the logs. Logs are keeping keep on writing there. Okay. So logs is very, very important. Okay, we will discuss about in detail in one of the discussion about architecture. So for any queries guys, feel free to ask your queries. Any queries? You will not speak, I will be considered as no queries. Okay, so I just memorizing this.
SPR architecture flow, how the flow of execution is going to work on way path. So when we talk about this one, right? Here, if you could see, okay, architecture. So by how we just using way path studio, I'm going to design a visible design automation visibly without code. Without code, I'm going to write most of the things. So we have a recorder to generate the you know, automatic sequences. So we have a drag and drop to robotic process. We have a drag and drop. We can drag the drag and drop the activities. And we can connect between these two, and I can run the process. So, so using UiPath Studio, I'm going to write the code. After this, I'm going to after test it, after unit test the code, I'm going to push my. I mean, going to deploy my code. Or publish my code into your UiPath orchestrator. So, what is UiPath orchestrator? The robotic workflow is a manage, control, and monitor robot creation, assess, process, queue, schedule, logs, and report generation that can be doable from the orchestrator. If you want to interact with any part of UA, your API, yes, I can able to interact with the API code. A code, I can, can create the custom activity by using any language. I'm going to say that you can create a you know, C sharp dot net, which is going to deal with you no know, Google API calendar or Google API. I mean any I mean APIs. So if you want to interact, with, you can interact the same code you want to push it into orchestrator. From the orchestrator, we can easily interact with any third party APIs. So by using UI UI path, you know, UI path orchestrator does, which is going to execute or monitor this type of applications, which is going to deal with mainframe, web application, secret, SAP, desktop. Which is going to deal with this type of operations that can be orchestrated. So here, robot, robot is which is going to execute the process automatically and accurately. What are the process which we are going to assign to particular what that is going to be run you know, accurately and you know, we can here hundred percent accuracy will be there because the robot will not do mistakes. So what are the instructions which we have we used to assign to the robot? The robot will basically just going to deal with that. So this is how the flow of architecture is going to be worked on this. So let's talk about user interface. So user interface is very, very important thing. So what is user interface? User interface is nothing but UA path. So I'm going to introduce UA path studio. So I'm just clicking here, which is going to moment of time. So by the time, right? So we have you no know, everything is like you no know, with standard ribbon. We can easily minimize, we can maximize. We have a start tab and design tab, execute tab, setup tab, project. I mean project folder, libraries, activities panel, properties, and output. So we'll today we are. I'm going to talk about only user interface. Okay. Let us discuss you now 15 minutes or 20 minutes about user interface. What exactly basically user interface is looking like that. So it's being launched here. Let us wait for a no? uh, Yeah. So this is the first page because I just I just install the trial version. File version will be now 12 weeks after now. Time it is going to be after 12 weeks going to expect. So I'm just going ahead with the file version because I have used it for a long back. Once you create this, so this is my first window. Here I can create the blank project or a simple process or some. Here let us go with blank process. So this is a window. Which is going to display us by creating new project. So here I'm going to create a new path. So by default, right? By default, the all the UA path project is going to push it into this location. So C colon, I mean users, respective user, document, inside the UA path, all the project is going to push it into here. If you want to change this location, yeah, you can change this location. Here, I'm going to create a new folder called So I'm just selecting this folder as my destination. I'm just giving here
and just creating one for a name called user interface demo here if you want to give the ins i mean the, in the description this is optional field yeah you can give or can you can leave it as as usual user interface demo right i am just clicking create this is going to take a moment of time to create the folder structure for this project it's being constructed there we go so this is is nothing but like user interface here we go this is your user interface which we are going to deal with ui path studio this is ui path studio this is one of the integrated development environment where we are going to talk about like we have what are the features that are available so by using the features and activities i'm going to design my workflow okay let's switch to the presentation card let us see what is the ribbon the ribbon is this one ribbon you can easily minimize and maximize it wherever we go right so i can able to minimize this and maximize the library and project and activities so we have a list of activities here which is going to deal with the different types of uh, operations we'll discuss one by one now so what is the start start contains right start will contain these many operations are available in the start tab so if you want to create a sequence or flow chart or step mission i can able to create by using new button if you want to save it you can save as save all export excel for the particular xaml i can do this xaml is nothing but the output of this folder output of the ui path i mean the extension of the ui path file is nothing but xaml which is going to seem to be like you no know, xaml format extensible mockup language okay and so if you want to run this robot right so by using press fi on this button i'm going to be able to run this so we have one different option like edit options these are called results if you want to recording any sequence or if you want to record any website or if you want to record windows application i can record it automatically what will happen is going to create sequences and this which is going to give us so we'll discuss in detail in our coming session so we have a screen snapping mechanism which is going to deal with any screen snapping i mean i want to start screen from the any windows application or the application yeah i can go ahead with this data snapping mechanism is there data snapping is used to and it is going to only desired for structured data that means that only it is going to work with the windows and the web application but i'm going to extract the data so in the form of table we will we'll see all the examples if you want to deal with any events also we can create here if you want to create the variables or many variables you can deal with so launch expo is one of the important tool which is going to talk about like you now it's going to launch this if you want to form any static character or dynamic character by using this you know launch explorer i can do this so i will introduce this one when we talk about ui and ui for elements or ui for user interface and this is ui elements user interface element and that time i'm going to introduce and we will discuss about what is this potential indicates we'll talk about this one later so that's all about like on the start we discuss right start to discuss we are discussing about design part i'm sorry so in the design part we are going to do, we do this Coming to the execute, what is the execute? The execute is nothing but if you want to run debug or validate or breakpoint, and if you want to see all this operation, or if you want to see the logs. So what is the log file? So by default, the log file will be pushed it into end application. If you put here the default path. So what is the default path here? User Mohan add data inside that we have local way path logs. So these are logs by default per day one log file be created. So what are the operations which we are doing from the UI path, which is going to push it into this location. So we'll discuss about in detail about the logs in upcoming things. And so what is the setup? So I'm done. And if my code is done, so finally I'm going to publish this one into my orchestrator. From here, you can able to publish it. Okay. So these are the brief about this tabs, and let's move on to the library. So what is the library here? So by default, when you're creating any UI for project, right, it's going to create one samples, examples here. See here, calculation, thing monitor, advanced. So if you want to check, you can check this what is contains. And snippets also, delay, loops, all those stuff here. So once you've done this, and come back to the um, project folder. 
So project folder is nothing but what? So it's going to create uh, one folder here, which is nothing but like you no. Know, by default, this come up with the main main dot xaml file. What is main dot xaml file? So by default, this is main dot xaml, right? Which is come up with a blank screen. So which contains what I'm trying to say? Uh, I mean, let's move on to this uh, physical part of this. So this is your project folder by default. So everything is fine, it's come up JSON file. So what is this JSON file will contain? So which contain about the project ID. See here, this. So we have to understand this. So what is this description? What are the description which we have given at the, where that is called user interface demo. So what is the version? So this version is, uh, UI path version. So what is main? What is the main XAML? This is my main example. What is ID? This is very, very important. This ID, right? The package, when you deploy the package, or in, or whenever deploying your code into our testator, the package is going to be created with this ID. The ID is nothing but your folder name. User interface demo is there. Right? This name and this ID should be same before you deploy into the orchestrator. Any dependencies there, like now, they want to depend on any other uh, packages. We will discuss what is a package. So we have any configuration things if you want to configure access, yeah, I can do this. If you want any SQL data, we will discuss in upcoming sessions like how we have, what is a private and what is the password properties of the particular activities. So this is about the project structure of the project folder structure. Let's move on to the activities. So we have different types of activities available See here. So that we must, if you want to, if you want to create one sequence, you have to drag and drop to the sequence. Inside this one, we are going to talk, we are going to add something on it. If you want to write line on the output, that means that if you want to display some output, like a console dot write line off. So we have a printf function in our in C language, printf or C out in C++, like that. So it is like a right line, is going to display some content on the output. I'll, I'll tell you what is the right output, or right line, or log message, or message box here. So we have different types of you no know, actives are available, which is going to deal with your uh, automating the process. So we'll discuss in detail. So this is about the activities panel. Now we have discussed what is the library, what is the process, and what is activity. Now let's move on to this part is nothing but it's a workflow design area. I think you are able to see this a blank screen, right? This part is nothing but workflow design area where I'm going to automate my process where I'm going to design my workflow in the form of graphical representation. Now, what is the outline? If you want to search from this current example, I can search here. If you want to navigate a particular sequence, because when you're creating sequence, give the rename for this so that I can easily navigate to that area. That is called outline. So what is a properties window? The properties window is nothing but the properties about the particular activity. So this is my activity. So this activity is nothing but statements dot sequence this is one of the my um, activity. What is the uh, default the um, properties for this sequence or oh, nothing but display name. So name, if you want the same name here, so if you want to make it on like this. Let's see through intro. So I'm just giving some name standard automating. This one name is going to be changed here. So what is the private property it is going to indicate if you don't want this information logging into your log file, if you uncheck this one, so the private is nothing but I don't want to store some um, password information on the log files. Yes, by using private property, I can do that. Now, this is about the properties panel. If you drag and drop some other activity into the assign activity, if we could see that the properties are going to be changed. So we'll discuss what is assign activity in our coming session. So, so this is about the you know, design area as well as outline and properties window. The last but not least, we have a three tabs are available here variable. So very, very key role for key point for this UA for our test is declaration variable, declaration of argument, and import name spaces. So what is the variable? The so variable is nothing but here we are we are going to this we have this is a variable panel 
but I'm going to declare the variable and what is the type of the variable and what is the scope of the variable. All these things I'm able to create it here. Scope and all is nothing but what? The scope is nothing but here we will discuss in detail scope in the now discussing about the variables chapter. So this is where I'm going to I mean create the variable. So what is the argument? Argument, argument is a more or like a variable, but here I'm going to interact with multiple, with, I mean, multiple XAML files or multiple workflows. We want to pass data from one workflow to another flow, another workflow to make sure that I have declared the argument. So by using the argument, I'm able to, I mean, I'm able to data, I'm able to send the data across the, across the um, workflows. So namespace. So namespace is nothing but what? It's the import concept. If you want to deal with any database operation, I want to interact, I want to, I want to pull one namespace or a package from the, this data. Right now, if you want to deal with system.activities, because I can I can interact with system.activity, or if you want to deal with you know, database operations, what exactly we have to do? System dot SQL client. SQL client is a namespace. The namespace is nothing but here the collection of classes. The collection of classes, if you want to deal with database operations, which contain different different classes there. If you want to access the classes, first of all, you have to import the namespace. So we'll discuss in detail about this point. So this is how your user interface will be looking at. And we have a last thing is called output. The output is nothing but, so whatever the data you are printing on the screen, it is going to display here. See here. Uh, so we have discussed all these things, right? What is the start? What is the export? What is the set of project? Like actually this kind of property kind of thing. So we have discussed in detail about this. And these are the keyboard shortcuts. If you want to deal with, you know, uh, what I'm trying to say, if you want to deal with any, um, uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, shortcut operation operations on the screen, on the UEFA Studio, yeah, we can able to create, we can able to use this. Thanks. I'm going to share this document with you guys. You can go to this uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts. And we have seen this one, right? Default the structure of the, so it is going to default the created. So, screenshot folder. So, capture screenshot when we capture the element. If you want to see, anyway, we are going to you know, capture the UI element from the screen, right? When you capture anything on the screen, automatically screenshot folder will be created. I'll show it in upcoming session, like how we are going to deal with screenshots folder. So which contain information about the project, right? Already we have seen like you no. Know, so what is the I mean I mean thing is which is going to in the uh, I mean JSON format, which is going to talk which is contain information about the project. What is the project ID, what is the dependencies, what is the you know, uh, contribution settings, what is the ID, what is the version of the list, all this information is going to put it here. So what for, version format is looking like a major version, minor version, build and revision. This is consists of the UA part version format. Okay, let's create a small workflow, okay? Now, this is your, what I'm trying to say, a sequence, okay? Now, this sequence, inside see the sequence is going to be container. Inside the sequence, I can able to push a number of activities into that, okay? Now, I'm just right line concept. The right line is an activity which is going to display data on the output panel, okay? Like, I'm going to, in this in hello world welcome to the park so now save this i want to display this information on the output panel how we are going to display it i'm save this i'm going to run it my front office robot got kick started and see here the instance is uh, started and closed and completed. So after this, here we go. User interface, then execution started and display the timeline. I mean, displaying information. Hello world, welcome to UA path. So I'm displaying this message on the screen and finally it's workflow ended. So finally it is going to display with us how much you know, how much how much time is that used for executing this complete process. So this is how I'm going to display the data on the screen.
let's same example if you want to do with the flowchart i'm creating flowchart demo one So here, the flowchart has come up with the start button. Now I'm just drag and drop the activity. I'll come to your part. So I just want to display this. Flowchart is nothing but what is this? I no, no. Uh, it is like you know, graphical representation. So here, where it is throwing error, the so flowchart demo does not have a start node because the start node does not have which because start which node it should be work first of all. It doesn't know. Right click this, set as start node. So this is how your flowchart will be looking like this. Okay. Save this, and I'm going to run this. Here we go. The output is going to display like this. So this is how the sequence and flowchart will be looking like this. So we will we'll, in upcoming session we'll create more number of sequence and more number of flowcharts which contain different different operations and different different activities. Any queries, guys? So far, this is about like you no know, introduction about uh, uh, user interface, and I'm just creating a small workflow and small. Flow, I mean to say that it contains a flowchart as well as sequence. Any queries, guys? Clear for me. Hey, Kumar. Yeah, thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, I think that's it for today. We'll connect the same timing tomorrow. We'll discuss you know, more on user interface and we'll slowly move on to the course content. Okay. So no queries, right? I'm just good to wind up the session today. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.